Hey everybody. Um, so um, the session is uh, self-service OpenShift cluster creation. My name is Rasty Wagner. I'm software engineer at Red Hat. And uh, about a year ago, oh, I turned it off. Okay. And about a year ago, uh, we started working on a new operator, uh, which is called Cluster as a Service Operator. Uh, it's already available on uh, Operator Hub. Um, just some first version. We are just in these days. We are trying to release a new one. Uh, and there is this um, one liner description which says uh, that you can easily install fully configured clusters. So, uh, how easy uh, did we actually make it? Um, as any other or most of the Kubernetes operators, um, they bring in some CRDs, right? These are APIs that you can use to talk to the operator, tell, tell the operator what to do, and then you can get some feedback. So one of uh, such CRDs that our operator brings in uh, is called Cluster Template Instance. And what you need to do is just fill in the name and the namespace. And in the spec part, you need to uh, reference some cluster template. So in this case, the cluster template is called Cluster with Kafka, right? So the name can give you some hints that it will install some OpenShift cluster where you already will have a Kafka instance running, configured, and ready to be used. Uh, you will submit this uh, cluster template instance, and some magic will happen. And after some time, uh, in the status, you will get um, all the info that you need uh, to be able to log into your cluster, such as API, URL, admin password, and the cube config. And you can log into the cluster, do whatever you want. You may break the cluster, it doesn't really matter. And once you are done with it, uh, you will just delete the cluster template instance, and um, cluster is gone. So that's it, really. Um, that's how you can self-service your own clusters. Um, yeah. um, do you have any, any questions? <laughs> OK, no, not yet, right? So you are probably interested about that magic part, like what happens after you submit that cluster template instance. Um, so clusters as a service operator is not reinventing the wheel, right? We, we um, are using uh, the operators, controllers, and technologies that are already available. Uh, they are very, uh, you know, a lot of, they have a lot of users in Kubernetes world, they are popular. And uh, they provide all the pieces that you need to self-service, but it's not very really tied together. So we kind of uh, try to uh, take them and um, just give them some order to, to deliver the, the self-service experience. And the technologies and operators uh, that we use are Argo CD, Hive, HyperShift, and Helm. Um, so, Argo CD, right? I guess anybody already knows that, but just to repeat, um, so Argo CD follows the GitOps pattern of using Git repositories as the source of truth uh, for uh, defining the desired application state. Uh, but it can not only be just Git repositories, it can also be a Helm chart, so you would be using a Helm repository uh, for that. So you have that source of truth. Um, the Argo CD, you will tell the Argo CD that this is my repository, please deploy it on some cluster. Uh, Argo CD will deploy it, uh, it will start monitoring it and make sh making sure that the deployment uh, is matching the, the source of truth. Um, and Argo CD is uh, really a center of cluster as a service because we use it to deploy day one manifests on a hub cluster. Um, and day two manifests on the spoke cluster. So hub cluster is like the main cluster where, or where the cluster as a service is running and all other operators, and the spoke cluster is the cluster that you are trying to deploy. Uh, and what are these manifests? So day one manifests are custom resources of Hive or HyperShift. Um, so th these are operators or controllers that um, enable you to, to install OpenShift, right? Uh, and the difference is that the Hive installs uh, standalone clusters. So these are clusters where you have uh, three control planes. So you need three machines for that. And then uh, you need some machines for workers to run your workload. Um, and uh, HyperShift also installs OpenShift clusters, but 
the difference is that um, you don't need those three machines uh, to run the uh, control planes, but instead all those services are run as a pods on the, on the hub cluster. And these projects, they have different APIs. Um, and they two manifests um, that can be anything. That can be anything that you want to do after the installation. Because when the uh, Hive or Hypershift, when they install the cluster, um, the cluster is empty, right? There is nothing really going on in that cluster. Um, and as a day two, you would like to make that cluster actually useful. So you maybe want to install some database, maybe configure IDP, uh, install some operators, run some instances, and so on. So really make it, make it ready for maybe a developer to really uh, be able to do what the developer needs to do. Okay, so um, how the flow looks like, let's try to visualize that. Um, so we have those day one and day two manifests. Uh, they live either in some Git repository or in some Helm chart repository. Uh, then we have a hub cluster, and on that hub cluster, the cluster the service operator is running, of course, and there is also Argo CD running and Hive or Hypershift or both. Um, and what we do is that we tell Argo CD, here are my day one manifests. Um, please take them and deploy them on the hub cluster. So Argo CD will do that. Um, the Hive or Hypershift will notice uh, those new CRs that could deploy it, and um, it will create a new cluster, right? That spoke cluster, the new one. Um, and after the cluster is installed, we again tell Argo CD, uh, here are my day two manifests, please uh, again deploy them, but on the new cluster, right? So because Argo CD can manage multiple clusters, not just the, uh, just the uh, cluster on which the Argo CD instance is running on. And suddenly you have a new cluster which is uh, running something and is useful. All right, so uh, demo. Um, so first, let's, uh, let's um, try to create these uh, manifests. So I will close my slides. Yeah. Okay, great, you can see uh, my screen. Um, so for the day one, um, uh, let's create the uh, custom resource which will deploy uh, Hypershift cluster. Um, I already prepared um, some uh, skeleton, uh, let's say. Um, so here in the, I have the uh, devconf template which is a you know, typical Helm chart. We have a chart YAML uh, which is some metadata about the, about the Helm chart. So we have uh, some name and version. I will bump it right now, otherwise I would forget. We will be doing some changes here. Uh, we have a values, so these uh, provide uh, default values for, for the Helm chart parameters, and uh, of course we have a schema. Uh, and in the, in the resources that uh, we want to deploy, uh, we have the hosted cluster CR, uh, where everything uh, almost everything is hard coded, right? But we would, let's say, we would like to enable the user that is trying to self service uh, the cluster um, that not only um, 410 uh, version of the OCP will be deployed, but let's say that he can, he will be able to choose its own version. So let's do values OCP version. So this is a new Helm chart parameter. And also for the node pool, uh, where the uh, version is defined also. Let's do this. All right, um, node pool specifies how many workers we want to have in the new cluster. And we will have just one worker, which is uh, enough in, in our case. And the platform that I'll be using is the agent platform. Uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of platform you use. Uh, we don't have any restrictions. We support basically anything that uh, that Hypershift uh, supports. So uh, in this case, I'm using Agent, which 
uh, is a platform where you just take some VMs or bare metals, you boot them from the ISO, and you can use those, uh, those machines as, as workers. Um, all right, so I made some changes. Uh, let's, let's say that in the values, I would say OCP version, I think before I had like something like 4.10.19. Uh, so this will be default if the user doesn't provide a custom OCP version, then we will still deploy 4.10. And also we should probably add it to the schema. And uh, I'll say the OCP version is string, even though we could use something more restrictive like enum. Um, but yeah, this, this is fine for, for us. Um, okay, I'll make sure that all my uh, files are saved. And let's package this Helm chart. So uh, I will do Helm package devconf template. I will update the repository index and I will commit all my changes to my key repository. All right, and um, now my uh, repository is set up in a way that on every push, uh, it will run an action which will deploy a new uh, Helm chart repository, right? So it's, it's already running, it will take like a minute or so. In the meantime, uh, we can take a look at the day two manifests. Um, so for day two, let's say we would like to install uh, StreamZ operator and, uh, and, uh, and then deploy uh, some Kafka instance, I just found some example on the, on the web with some default values. Um, so, and this is just, uh, these are just plain old YAMLs, right? This is not a Helm chart, and this already uh, is on my uh, Git repository. All right, so now we have day one and day two manifests. Um, now let's try to uh, take them and just put them into the, into the uh, cluster template. Um, and I will switch to UI right now because I also want to show this, that we uh, actually have a UI for the clusters as service operator. I'm not sure if you ever um, like saw the UI of the uh, OpenShift, but uh, the cool thing here is that OpenShift supports uh, these dynamic plugins. So your operator can bundle the UI um, and simply run the HTTP server as a pod, uh, expose it as a service, tell the uh, UI that here is my service and uh, it's, uh, it can serve the, the UI, right? The, the UI plugin for the, uh, for the OpenShift. And, and when, you, when you go to UI, it will dynamically load all those JavaScript assets and uh, it, will, it will render the, the UI here. So in this case, right, we are adding the uh, cluster templates uh, navigation item. And when you go there, uh, you will see the cluster templates. So there, there is a few of these, like three, uh, that are default, but let's create a, a new one. So let's name our template. Let's say we have kind of cluster. Uh, we can do some descriptions for the uh, users that will try to solve service and just type something here, right? You can, this is like a markdown template, let's say, new cluster with Kafka, right? Um, so the installation settings, these are the uh, day one manifests. Um, let's add, uh, add our um, Helm chart repository. And I will pick the devconf template and the new version 0010 is already uh, in, the, in the repository. And we can say into which uh, namespace we want to deploy um, all, the, all the files from the Helm chart. Uh, so let's pick clusters and this is because, um, I didn't show this before, but if you, if you take a look at this hosted cluster, 
Um, there's a couple of secrets here, right? So here you have a reference for the pool secret and some SSH key. And these are, I don't want to expose this info um, on my publicly available you know, Helm chart. So I already have these secrets um, on my hub cluster in the, in the cluster's namespace, right? So when the Helm, tra Helm chart is deployed, uh, it, can, it can find them in the correct place. And now uh, for the post installation, uh, we can uh, either choose a Helm chart or a Git, um, but uh, in this case, I will choose a Git repository. So again, let's add a new repository, uh, which is this GitHub IDP. And uh, we need to say um, from which commit branch or tech uh, we want to deploy stuff, so let's choose the main branch and directory path will be Kafka. Destination namespace doesn't need to be filled in because that's already given by the, by the resources here, so the subscription will be deployed in OpenShift operators namespace and Kafka in the Kafka namespace. All right, so um, the template is created, right? Um, you can see that uh, when I show you the YAML, um, in the spec part, we have that cluster definition and cluster setup. And these are actually application sets. So this uh, probably sounds familiar. These are uh, custom resources of Argo. And um, the, the spec part uh, contains all the info that we put into the wizard, right? So we have the Helm chart repository, uh, which Helm chart should be deployed, um, and, the, and the version of the Helm chart. And also we have another application set for the day two, which is the Git repository. And it all seems okay to me. Um, so the, um, the template is ready, and now um, let's try to use it as a, as a user. Uh, so we don't really have a UI for the user. Uh, so let's do this from the, from the command line. Um, I'm, I'm already logged in as this user called Ravagner. And so I'm not a, not a cluster admin anymore. And uh, I can't really, can't really do anything on this cluster. I'm, this is a very like, restricted environment. So if I uh, try to do good projects, um, I have just two uh, namespaces available to me. Um, and if I, and let's switch to this Ravagna namespace. And if I try to do like get pods, right, I'm forbidden to do anything. I can't do really anything. But what I can do is I can, I can self service the, the cluster, which was defined. So what I can do is that I can get cluster templates. Um, I will probably want to like explore, let's say, the devconf cluster, right? So we do devconf cluster. Um, and uh, what's important here that in the status, um, I can see uh, the schema and the values of the, of the Helm chart. And I'm seeing that, yeah, okay. So here you can see, right, that OCP version that we edit um, uh, for the schema. And um, so let's say I want to use this one. Uh, so I need to create the uh, cluster template instance as I showed in the beginning. And I should already have uh, the YAML almost prepared. Um, so let's, let's edit it a little bit. Let's call this my cluster. And the cluster template that we want to deploy is called devconf cluster, if I remember correctly. All right, so the um, CTI is ready. Well, we can, we can uh, submit it. And just Make, let's make sure that we are deploying into the correct namespace. Okay. 
All right, so the cluster template um, was submitted. We can export the content. Oh, we can see the faces installing. Let's, let's, take, let's take a look at the, at the YAML here. Um, so you can see that here in the status, there is actually a lot more than I showed in the example in the beginning, um, where there are some conditions and you can actually um, watch the, the progress of uh, the cluster creation. Uh, so these are basically the phases which follow in the exact same order as are written in the, in the array. So the first thing that is happening is that the application was created, right? The RDOC, the application. And the uh, second condition is that the cluster is installing. And uh, we, we can see that um, it's still being installed, right? This will take, take some time. Like, um, I know for HyperShift, it will take like 10 minutes to deploy the control plane nodes and then um, maybe 15 to, yeah, like 15 minutes to deploy the agent. Um, then we have the, um, then we are trying to create a managed clusters because we are uh, trying to integrate with MCE. MCE is, uh, is an operator which stands for multi-cluster engine and it allows you to uh, manage your clusters like in, in bulk. Um, and then um, there is a cluster let create Cluster right, add-on created, right? So this is this one. This is also related to MCE. And after that's all done, we add the new cluster to the Argo. So Argo can manage the new cluster. And then we run the uh, day, two, um, day two manifests, right? So in this case, it will deploy StreamZ operator and create a Kafka instance. And then we wait for it to succeed. And once all that is succeeded, um, we, we will see, we will get the um, API URL and, the, and all the credentials that we need. Not before, right? So the cluster needs to be uh, completely ready. And just after that, you will get the credentials. Um, and we don't want to wait here for that, but I already um, created another cluster from a different template. But um, it's basically the same. It, yeah, it's, I guess it's exactly the same. So um, it deploys, it, it already deployed a cluster where Kafka is running. Um, and what I can do is just take the credentials, right? I can log in. And I would do get Kafka. And the Kafka is running there. And I can do anything. I want to do on the cluster, and once I'm done, I would, I would delete it. Um, yeah, okay, so, but that's not all. Um, there is one important um, part missing, and that's when users get access to this cluster template instance uh, CRs, they can create infinite amount of clusters, right? That's going to cost a lot of money, and you still want to um, somehow restrict them. Um, so we have another, um, custom resource, which uh, which is called cluster template quota. Um, this is very similar to building Kubernetes quotas. It's just this one focuses on the cluster templates use case. Um, and in this quota resource, you can restrict um, basically two things, uh, and one is which templates the user can create, right? So which, users, which, which templates the user can reference in the cluster template instance, and also how many instances the user can create. And uh, how many instances um, that can be done in two ways, so you either just use plain old um, like number, right? So you will say I have a template A and template B, and template A I will say there can be two instances of template A and like three instances of template B. But that's not really very flexible at all times. Um, so we have this uh, other kind of more abstract concept where you can, uh, where you can give every, every template can have some kind of associated cost. And you can think of it like, um, let's say, 
how much does it take to run such a cluster for a week, right? So let's say template A would be like um, $100 per, per month or per week, right? And template B would be like $500. Um, and then in the quota, you can put a budget, and the budget will be 500, right? So in that case, when the user is trying to create clusters, he can either create five instances of template A or one instance of template B, right? Or, or some kind of a combination like that. Um, yeah. So maybe I can also show you Uh, how such a such a such a cluster uh, template quota looks like. So in the UI again, we can go to some cluster, um, and in the quotas I didn't set up any yet. So I will create a new one, example, and I will say that this quota is for the Ravagna namespace, and I will allow creating only the DevComp cluster, and I will say that only one cluster from this template can exist. So we have a template, and if a user now would try to uh, create another one, uh, so let's do again OC create, and it will say, oh, I'm logged into the spoke cluster. So let's log in back. Okay, let's switch the project. And let's create the CTI again. And uh, I'm denied because there is a webhook which checks uh, whether uh, I still have, I'm still within the limits that were set to me by, by the admin. Um, okay, yeah, so that's um, all I have. Um, there is a repository uh, which you can go to, um, read the documents, right, uh, and try it out. Um, okay, thank you. Um, do you have any questions? Yes? How did you different from Red Hat ACM? From Red Hat ACM, okay. Well, um, this is actually, s maybe at some point will be part of the ACM. Um, ACM doesn't really solve the um, self-service use case because ACM is really targeting for the admin users where they have a you know, uh, like a fleet of clusters that they can manage, um, but you don't really give access to ACM to like regular users, right? Because they would they could do a lot of stuff that you don't want them to do. Yeah, th this is like um, for admins to provide this self-service experience for the users. Yeah, but yeah, and like the users can be. Developers, sure, like it can be a team, it can be a single person, or um, you know, some, some kind of a customer that just needs to uh, deploy a cluster. Yes? So you mentioned, like you um, modified the API to make it a parameter? Uh-huh, oh, right. Sure, so uh, you are asking uh, if, if uh, we can make a parameter, not only the version, but like the whole URL. Yes, yes of course, yeah, you can do that. This is like a, uh, you know, it's, it's just a Helm chart. It's nothing special about it. So you, you would, you would uh, yeah, this is the devconf template. And instead, instead of the OCP version here, right, you would just make the, the whole thing a parameter like this, right? And yeah, th that's really up to you. It depends on how much flexibility you want to give users to be able to modify the template. Sure. Any other question? Uh, and maybe one more thing that I forgot to do uh, is that, so we, uh, before, right, we made the OCP version uh, a parameter. So uh, in order to actually use that parameter, um, 
a U boot in the spec, you would do parameters, and then this is an array, so you would do OCP version, like name is OCP version value, something like 4, 12, 21, right? And then it would deploy the, the version that you want. Okay, so that's all.